Today we're putting in the Wapro 255 in the 240SX. The stock fuel pump for the 240SX will not be enough for, well, putting the LS in. So, you gotta upgrade the pump. I have a Walboro 255 and their accessory kit. Of course, you can try to get in from, you know, the trunk, but it's probably a little bit easier to climb in the car. If you don't have a gutted interior, like so many do, uh, or if you still have your rear back, put this down. And again, if you have carpet, take out your clips. And you can lift the carpet up from inside and you can push it back. And then that shows you where your S14 fuel pump is. It should be four 10 millimeter bolts. But before we do that, I want to unplug the fuel pump fuse and run the car till it runs out just to relieve a little pressure. So let's do that. All right, pulling off the fuse box cover, we can look at the third one from the bottom is the fuel pump and that's a 15 amp fuse. You can take off your fuse puller from the cover if you still have or barrel needle nose, whatever. Go down here, get the third one. See the first one is empty. Two, three, and then there's two ten, so it's the one right below that blue one, which is a 15. Pull that one out. You got the 15. Make sure that's the third one. Okay. Once you have the fuse pulled, start your car. And it should die pretty fast. Try one more time. Okay. And that should help relieve the pressure from the fuel system. All right, this bolt is a 10 millimeter. So get your 10 millimeter on there and take them off. Be able to lift the cover off and you want to unclip these two clips they have a little push tab right here as you pull up and then the other one has it right there out of the way. Just gonna rotate it out of the way that way. Alright, your uh, I guess that's a little rubber grommet for the plug I'll put back on. So you have like a vent and your uh, feed and return lines. You want to get those off. I can see these have been upgraded with the better is the old style. It's a little bit newer style. Let's get those off. All right, with knowing that these two plug or these two hoses have actually been updated with newer newer uh, clamps, it might be a little bit easier to get these hoses off.
with some wiggling and twisting and pulling. Should be able to get the hoses off. Careful not to lose your clamps down in the void. This one I need to want to get a little bit of rag. And then with the older style. Once you get the hoses off, I'm gonna put a shop towels here. Put that one there. You have this big ring that needs to slide off. So just get a uh, screwdriver, just peg it in one of these corners, and then just tap it around. Once you have that off, you can lift up, you can lift up the fuel pump. It does have a, a rubber seal around it. There we go. And then that has everything for your fuel pump. We'll need to look down inside at how the fuel pump is actually connected into the gas tank. Let's do that. It's quite hard to see if you shine a light down in there. That's where it clips onto. Once you take the gray clip and you slide it out, it'll come out, and here it is. Of course, you want to get the fuel pump off, and we want to have this, so we want to take this connection off as well. Hard to do with one hand. All right, to get the pump off, we need to get the feed hose clamped. And there we go. You can see the difference in size from the wall bra to this one. This one's much more compact and it's even a little bit shorter. So that's everything you got to count for when you're making the, the hose. You want to make it make sure you may have it a little bit longer. And like most people do, I want to try to use this stock sock. It's much bigger than the one supplied. Then you have your connectors. So we're gonna have to cut and splice those and get those together. All right, so first things first, let's get this sock off the stock fuel pump. And so if you could see really close, there's this, right here, there's this clip, where to go, there it is. There's this clip right here that you pull off, and that'll allow you to pull the sock off. 
and after picking with it, might be able to get it off. It's starting to come off. There we go. So that one time clip comes off. Then you can separate the sock. Just to give you the comparison, there's the stock sock and there's the wall bra sock. I mean, it's so much bigger. So if it's in good condition, I mean, it's worth using again. So having this, it does, the kit that I got does come with one more thing I saw in here. There it is. It's in here. It's got one more one time use one time use clip. So I can, you know, clip it over there and still use this. But now pretty much have everything taken apart except for the wiring. And I figure since we'll keep this, you know, I, I don't want to cut it to link yet. So I'll just go ahead and just clip it right here. I'll leave a little bit of space in case there's some issue, then I can, um, if there's an issue with the wall bar and I need to use this again, I'll have enough space. If I end up clipping it here and there's a problem, then I'm gonna have the issues. So just as a, a little precaution. All right, so I moved with some better lighting. I'll just go ahead and cut the wires here. Put this off to the side. And I cleaned up the top a little bit. I want to fit the sock. Take my hand off. Take my glove off. Fit the sock on the here. And you see you have the clip here. Snug that on. Then we'll want to get the one time clip. See if I can get that. So you got instructions. Got the bottom. Got some clips. It came with some butt connectors or these connectors and I, you know if you ended up having a problem and they ended up coming loose you're gonna have to pull out the whole fuel pump again and deal with it so instead of worrying about that I'm gonna solder these together and then uh, heat sink them uh, put some heat shrink on them and then they, they should be good and they should never come apart um, this might be a good idea, but sometimes they, I don't know, they wiggle loose. I don't think that there's any really stress in the uh, gas tank area, but just in case. Okay, you also got your link of hose, and then your connector. And be careful not to lose this one-time clip you have here. You want to get this I can take off my other gloves so I have free hands and we'll just want to press it on all right once you get that one time use clip it took me a little while to get this on but once you get that on then of course you could start test fitting it up to where you go in here so you have your boot here that can put on
Okay. Then it is keyed a special way. As you can see, it's flat on this side here. So you'll have this go in here. And you'll have it sitting in there like that. And then you'll need this. So, with that sitting in, not there, we can judge how much hose we need. We have it bottoming out here, and bottoming out there. Turn it to the side. So I need about this much here. Get your razor blade or whatever you're going to cut it with. And you just want to cut it straight. on. I'm not going to use this clip again. I'm going to use these newer clips here. I'm going to put one of the clips on. Put one on here. And take off your cap. Alright, once you get your cap off, save these because you never know when you're going to do something with an engine or you know you have a hose or you know maybe fuel line you just want to cap off just keep those all right so you're going to slide it on slide that in let's go ahead and Light it on our fuel rail. Don't forget to seat it back in place. So it sits nice and firm in there. Clamp these down. Once you get the clips on, and it's sturdy inside the housing, all that you have left is to do the wiring. You have the wiring here, and the wiring that comes with the wall bro. And you want a little extra wiring so it can, you know, move around and not get too tight. So, we'll measure it out. We went full, pretty much full length on the stock one. It's probably about that much longer. Probably about, you know, that much longer. So we only need about that much. So let's just, for good graces, we'll cut it in half. So we got our fuel pump side. Now we'll get our harness side. All right, sorry about the air conditioner, but it kicked on. All right, for the wiring, for the side it's on the car, there's two red ones. There's one with a white stripe. This white stripe is the ground and the solid red is the power so you want to make sure you don't get those those mixed up
plug that in. Wait till it snaps. A little tug, make sure it doesn't come out. And this is pretty sturdy in there with these with these hoses clamped and this down. I don't think it's gonna move around in there, so I don't think I've seen some people put you know zip ties around there and stuff like that. And that's not a bad idea. Though you know I don't And maybe if I do it, it'll end up pulling this away. I think it'll be fine just like this. It's nice and sturdy. All right, I am losing light. It's starting to get dark, but when you have the fuel pump, you want to end up getting it back. You want to get it back in the way it was. Get this up here. Don't forget to plug in the gauge. The wiring for the gauge comes in here. Give your seal a look over just to make sure you know it's not too damaged. Alright, so down on the back side against there, there is a slide. It sits like this. And then the two edges of the bracket for the fuel pump you bring up over and slide down into that. See if you can get that. And that's how they go back on. And then as long as you have everything plugged back in, kind of move your hoses out of the way. Put it down and want to make sure you fit it right without the seal peeling up. All right, after you get the seal nice and tight down on there, make sure it's orientated the right way. And then get this plastic seal on there. This, or this, uh, this this could be a real pain in the ass because it always wants to cross thread a little bit up or a little bit sideways so take some work to get it nice and flat so take your time get it right and then you can uh, same thing as you did to take it off get a screwdriver to hammer it uh, hammer it on nice and tight all right once you got the screw top on go ahead and Hook up your hoses. All right, once you get the hoses, the clamps back on, you need plugs. So you got the two connectors right here. Plugs in. snaps in and then this folds back down there we go all right take 15 and plug it back in from the third from the bottom There, all right. Put your fuse pulling tool back on. Put the cap. What's up guys? All right, today is another day. Yesterday it started getting pretty dark, so I decided to film the rest of this day. I got the fuel pump finished and all buttoned up. Everything back works fine. And I noticed that on my other, on the drift event, kind of hit here, I maybe should have rubbed this and then it cut the tire pretty good. So, probably need to get this taken care of. 
but also you might ask why I decided to get the the fuel pump in now instead of waiting till I started to put the LS in I it's just something else that I wanted to have done uh, and I know it's working so it's not a, a problem so when I get the engine in if there's an issue I don't have to worry about you know oh is it the fuel pump is it wired right or stuff like that and that's pretty much it that's how you install a fuel pump in a 240 it's pretty easy um, yes yeah, stay tuned for more peace